the other thing, uh, other big thing we have to do is make it so chunks load and unload as the this guy explores the world because we don't want the, or every tile in the world being visible at the same time. Um, it's not very effective performance wise. So the way we're gonna do that is having a script which basically this terrain generator does. It's gonna go through each chunk, calculate its distance to the player. If it's too much, then unload the chunk. So this is gonna be quite simple. All we have to do is really, uh, underneath our start method, we'll put it. We'll call it a void refresh chunks. Boom. So this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna say, for int i equals zero, i less than world chunks dot length. Yep, i plus plus. Um, if math f dot absolute value, so absolute returns whatever number it is as a positive. So it turns out, so if, for example, if it's minus five, it will return five. Um, literally just gets rid of the negative simple. So it's gonna be if i times chunk size minus player dot transform player dot transform dot position dot x right uh, why is this giving me an error float to bull oh yeah 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 okay is greater than camera dot orthography what's our uh, camera dot game object dot get component camera uh you know what let's just do this camera dot main dot orthographic size yes so if it's greater than the orthographic size then um world chunks i dot set active false yes and then else World chunks i dot set to active true. Um, I'm gonna get rid of these brackets. We don't need them. Save some lines. Okay, let's test this. Um, we'll have to put this in the update function. So let's put it in start for now. Let's say refresh chunk, and let's just see which chunks load in the first frame. Technically, it should be literally the chunks that the player is standing on. But we'll find out. Okay, that's cool. So as you can see, not all chunks loaded, but the chunks that we needed also didn't load. Um, so orthographic size, if it's greater than orthographic size, times 2.5f. <laughs> Because that's how we calculate the um, edge as well. So that's it, play. Technically, we should not see any gaps in the world. But we did. Uh, it's just loading the chunks on this side, interestingly enough. Why is that? If mathf.abs i times chunk size minus play x is greater than that. So that's the distance. And then we're getting the absolute value of that distance. So that should be fine. Okay, we'll just do it this way then. Vector two dot distance between uh, new vector two. I times chunk size and then zero and then comma, and then player position dot x. So yeah, new vector two again. This will take in player position dot x and zero as the y. So that way we're not calculating the um, y distance. We're just calculating on the x axis. If you had uh, chunks on the y axis as well, then you want to put the distance of that here as well. Um, that'd be slightly different calculation though. Uh, regardless, let's hit play and see what that does now. I have a feeling it won't work. Let's see if my feeling is correct. 
uh, it looks to be the exact same thing. Let's do this. Void update, refresh chunks. This could make uh, our world lag a bit. But we'll see. What we really want to do is have this update maybe like every few seconds rather than every frame. Seen if I select this player root object and drag him over here, you'll see that the chunks start appearing and disappearing, which is fantastic. But the issue is, of course, uh, about this distance. Then it disappears. Uh, because here we go, I know why. We're saying i times chunk size, so that's going to round it to the start of the chunk. What we really should be doing as well is saying plus chunk size divided by 2. So that way it will be from the middle of the chunk rather than the edge of the chunk, which should give us better results. So if I hit play again, go to scene, you can see now that the chunks that we can see have spawned. Um, they seem to be, obviously, you can see that it's um, disappearing slightly early. Um, because if I go to the game scene, as I explore, you'll see that chunk disappears, obviously, which is not very nice. Um, the other thing is as well, if, for example, I increase this, you can see that new chunks load in, the ones in view. If I decrease that, then the ones that aren't in view anymore disappear. So you can kind of see that, which is exactly what we want. We just want to increase that to maybe three. Um, so when we say is greater than orthographic size times 2.5f, let's make this maybe 4f. The higher, the better, really. Let me stop that, play that again. Because the higher it is, that means the less you'll see chunks popping in and out, which is exactly what you want. So let's have a look. Um, I think it's loaded every chunk. Oh, uh, the first one has not loaded. Okay, now it's loaded. Um, and it seems as if that this should be nice and smooth now. So let's have a look. There should be no chunks disappearing and appearing out of nowhere. Uh, I don't seem to see anything happening like that. Oh, did that appear out of nowhere? No. If I increase the orthographic size, you can see that every chunk has loaded. If I decrease it, oh, yes, there's an issue here. If it's too low, then yeah. But I don't think you're ever going to... Um, if you're ever going to leave this at like 3 or something, then there's a problem anyway. <laughs> But yeah, I'm happy with that. To be honest, uh, well, what's going on? Index uh, range. Ah, uh, because it's zero, that would make sense. Where's our dude? Ah, uh, yeah, he fell through the earth. That's fine. Um, anyway, you guys get the idea of that. That's all working fine and dandy. Um, added block breaking, that's perfect. Uh, apart from that, we're done for this episode. So, that's it from me, guys. I will catch you in the next one, where we will add placing blocks. And the other thing I actually really want to add is background blocks. So when our world generates, you can see our caves, for example. At the moment, they're just holes. What it should be is we should have, for example, a stone tile here, but with a slightly darker tone, so it's in the background, you know what I'm saying? So then all these uh, gaps should be like that. The other thing it should be as well is when we break these tiles, then these should actually be instead in the background, otherwise if you break a tile, it's just a hole in the world, which is not very nice. But yeah, so that's my next episode, I'll catch you guys then, join the Discord if you haven't already, subscribe, like, blah blah blah, yeah, you know what to do. Anyway, thanks guys. <laughs>